Hello again, this is Cerise Randy Murphy, author of the Order of the Seer Sci-Fi Trilogy, and this is video two, and, and video two of, let's see, what's my title? Author Tips for Exhibiting at Sci-Fi and Comic Conventions. We are going to talk in this video about how to prepare to uh, exhibit. Uh, hopefully you have Googled uh, book uh, festivals, uh, book events in your area. You've identified maybe a couple of book events that you'd like to uh, participate in. It might be a sci-fi convention. It might not. Either way, I think these tips will help you. Um, so let's get started. Okay, I have my little list here. The first thing you want to do uh, when you're considering exhibiting are your visuals. Now at book festivals, no matter how big or small, you always want to attract people and you know give them a reason to sort of that first visual impression so that you make it interesting and look like, hey, I want to come check that out. So uh, one of the first things you want to do is look at your visuals. Uh, banners, posters, uh, what visual representation will you have for your books? Now I have uh, retractable banners, and if you don't know what those are, they're sort of these. They look like like a metal almost tube, and uh, from that you can pull up this beautiful poster of you know your book covers, uh, some artwork that you might have um, that you can just sort of prop up behind you uh, that will help people get an immediate visual sense of what it is you're selling. Um, I started out doing using poster boards that I, I had printed uh, at like FedEx Kinko's or something like that. Those can be really expensive, up to $50 each. And believe it or not, um, by the time you buy two of those, you have almost paid for uh, a retractable banner, which is much more durable and will last you a lot longer. So I encourage you to check out retractable banners uh, as, if you're thinking about um, that as a visual uh, uh prop for your booth. Uh, I got mine from TRT Banners, but there are, and I think I paid $124 or something like that, which sounds like a lot. And it certainly is a lot of money, but I do at least half a dozen, probably more closer to 10, uh, to a full dozen, um, conventions every year. And so they're so easy and they just make setting up and taking down a lot easier. So I, anyway, I, I would look into that, but you can always go to Kinko's, get a poster board, and then just get an easel if, if that feels more accessible to you. So um, let's see, book displays. How are people going to see your book? Um, one of the things that I see a lot is that authors will put their book flat down on the table. Now imagine you want to step back and think about you as the consumer for a minute. The table's flat. Your book is flat on the table. How, if, if somebody's walking by at a distance, how is anybody going to see your book? They're not. So what you want to do is go to, you know, Michael's, wherever, and get yourself a book stand. It's just one of the ones that I use. This is really great if you want to stack a bunch of books together. Um, I use this for my children's book. But you can use, let's see, oh gosh, I have, I have props down here that I should have bought up. But anyway, any kind of, you know, plate, uh, display. Anything that will prop your book up is the point so that people can actually see it. And I have, you know, this is a much more effective, you can't see that, is a much more effective display than this. You have no idea what that is. So don't do that. Um, let's see. So how's your book going to be displayed? You can do stacks. I've seen different heights, you know, all of it. Just experiment with it. But the point is, the cover of the book's got to be up. Okay, tablecloth. Now, at different uh, conventions, some will provide tablecloth, some won't. You'll see in the contract that they will uh, give you when you sign up for a booth what should be, what will be included. Um, if some, oh, and we should definitely talk about this. Some won't include anything. So you've got to bring your table or rent a table. You've got to bring your chairs. You've got to bring a tablecloth, all of that. If they are most that at least I've gone to, they at least provide a table and at least one chair, but you want to cover that table up with something so that it looks cute and inviting. Um, you know, that can be a white tablecloth. That could be one of those plastic tablecloths that you, you know, would use at a cookout, whatever. You just don't want to have your wood and, and metal or your plastic table just kind of there. You want to present a professional front for your reader who deserves your best effort. 
So you might think these little things don't make a difference, but um, you know, if they come to your table and find out you're charging $20 for your book, they're expecting a professional display. So anyway, um, and we'll talk about how much to charge for books in a minute. Uh, let's see. After you've got your, you know, your basic setup, um, how many books to bring is, you know, an obvious next question. You know, for me, it depends. And it, it gets back to, I have a general rule of thumb that I'll share, but the biggest thing is how how committed are you to selling your books? Because I've seen people at events where there are 175,000 people. Again, they're sitting back and wondering why, you know, they're not selling any books. I've seen people at event, at events where there were no more than a thousand people and they are selling hand over fist because they are really committed to engaging the audience that's around them. So think about that because that's going to be the one of the biggest determinants to how many books you sell. So in general, like for example, if, I ha if I'm at an event where there are going to be around 200 people and your event, uh, the whoever's organizing your book event, they should be able to tell you generally how many people they're expecting based on last year's attendance, etc. So you want to make sure you ask that. If I'm in an event where there are going to be no more than 200 people, I've found that I don't generally sell more than 20 books. So I might bring 25, you know, between 20 and 30 books is what I might bring. If I'm at an event where there are 175,000 people, I will bring over 200 books easily. So it just so that will kind of give you a, a, a sense of how I do it. But um, the biggest determinant is going to be outside of just sheer numbers, because selling is in large part a numbers game in terms of how many people you engage um, before you get that return in terms of a sale. Um, how committed are you? So anyway, but those are some general rules uh, that I use. Uh, let's see. We've already talked about chairs, tables. If they're not going to you know, bring them, you need to. Uh, supplies. Now, this may seem like really, really simple, but I'll tell you, when you're out there and you're organizing your booth and readers are coming, you want to make sure that you have everything you need to uh, be comfortable, be relaxed, and you know, get the job done in terms of uh, meeting your audience and, and selling your, your books. So uh, things that I use in terms of supplies, scissors, tape. I like masking tape because it's very versatile. It can, it's heavy. You can roll it up and hide things in the back. And anyway, uh, pens, markers, breath mints. Do not, it's a long day. And you might've had that, you know, that uh, Philly steak that was awesome, but it might not smell so awesome. So get some breath mints. Don't knock your customers out. Uh, a small stapler, uh, hand sanitizer, sign-in sheets. Now these are really, uh, they seem like simple things, but again, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, conventions where you've, you've engaged people and you have no way of getting in contact with them after you've made that sale. Your sign-in sheet is a really critical part of doing that because that's how you build your mailing list. Now you can use sheets of paper, but I use, hold on, let me see if I can get one of my props. And this is um, a tip that I got from a veteran exhibitor um, before I went to New York Comic Con. He told me to use a notebook. The reason why is this, you don't have to worry about losing you know, uh, she sheets of paper, everything on your sign-in sheet is right here. If you have business cards, and this is the reason you get your stapler, you can just staple your business cards, put a little note about who that person was and why you need to follow up with them right in your handy dandy uh, sign-in notebook. So it's all there. You just pick it up and leave. Um, and I found it to be really, really helpful. I can just track people down and it's all in one place. So that's amazing. Um, Let's see other things. This video is already almost 10 minutes. Swag. You know, everybody enjoys getting a little something for free. Um, it can really uh, make your customer feel like you're being, uh, you've really thought about them and you're, and you're trying to enhance their experience. And if, if you plan it properly, it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. So uh, one of the things I use for swag is I have, oh gosh, I have little pencils that I use. Uh, I have a children's book out called Ellis in the Magic Mirror. 
And I don't know if you can see that, uh, not that well. Anyway, I have little pencils that say Ellis in the Magic Mirror, and I just give one away um, if you buy a book or not. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that people, I continually get feedback on that, you know, it's just kind of a little nice thing. Another thing that people like, bookmarks. I have uh, bookmarks for Order of the Sears. You can use pens, whatever. I use, I get uh, my bookmarks uh, printed through gotprint.com. Uh, you can, you know, feel free to find whatever works for you. I'm not good at uh, graphic design, so what I find is uh, Got Print does really high quality printing, but they also do the design for you, which, you know, is really helpful for me. And something that you may consider, this is a little postcard that I give out uh, for people who would like to, you know, I've given them my pitch about the book, and they're like, oh, well, do you have something I can check out? Uh, it has a little blurb about the trilogy on the back, and you'll notice this little QR code right here, which I found really helpful. This QR code leads you to the first chapter of the first book, which you can get for free. So it's not like weighty or something. It's not. It's just literally a postcard, and this little postcard is the first chapter. You can access the first chapter of my book. And what I've what I found is that people who you know they've heard the pitch, they want to check it out a little more. They're not sure they want to spend ten dollars on an author they've never heard of before in a book they've never heard of. They feel really great that they can scan this QR code and get a sample of my work before they buy. Oftentimes, I've had people go, you know, they're in the line for the bathroom at the convention. They scan this QR code, read the first chapter and come back and buy the book. So it's a great way to provide a sample of your work that's not cumbersome and, you know, kind of thick, but uh, a really good tip. And again, I, I get these printed at Got Print, but you can use whoever works for you. Uh, another piece of swag that I also give away is my Order of the Sears tote bag. Now I I got these from greenmonster.com. Again, I think they're, if you get them on sale, they're like 75 cents per bag. Um, and it's amazing. If you buy the trilogy, you get, you get my, um, my reusable bag. And it, it's amazing how that really, you know, just really helps to seal the sale for some folks. But anyway, everybody likes a little something for free. So those are just the things that I use. You know, I've seen pens and, you know, I don't know, coffee mugs and all kinds of stuff. Think about it. It's easy to spend a lot of money and not get the return. So you want to make sure that whatever you choose um, really gets your brand out there. You know what I mean? With your name um, and add some kind of value. So it's not going to end up on the floor at the convention. All right. This video is already 12, almost 13 minutes. I'm going to say bye-bye. And we're going to talk about pitches next time and what to say.